Hello students, today we are going to learn about the next topic in the chapter 5 that is effective stress principle. Coming to the next topic, it deals with the effect of water table fluctuation, surcharge and the capillary action. So, what is the effect of water table on the effective stress? Let us learn. So, the effect of fluctuation, that is the difference, uh, in whether it is increasing or decreasing, of the water table on the distribution of the effective stress with the depth can be summarized as follow. So, if the water table is below the ground surface, below the ground surface, so there is a rise of water table uh, causes a reduction in the effective stress and a fall in the water table will produce an increase in the effective stress. So, if the water table is above the ground surface, if the water table is above the ground surface, this fluctuation is exposed uh, to the water level which does not alter the effective stress in the soil. Only it affects if the water table is below the ground surface. So, the effect of fluctuations of water table on effective stresses, uh, we can consider some facts noted each year during monsoon through the personal observation of newspaper reports. What happens generally in the monsoon, the groundwater uh, table is known to rise due to the uh, rains and hence effective stress also reduces, so shear stress also reduces. But when the shear stress reduces below the magnitude of shear stress in soil, which slides or collapses occur. So, increase in the Total stress occurs instantaneously whereas an increase in effective stress is not instantaneous because the particle adjustment and readjustment is not instantaneous. Hence, uh, the effective stress is not instantaneous. So, coming to the effect of water table on the effective stress, here the downward pressure or uh, the downward force is taken as P at the section XX here. So, uh, which is equal to the weight of the soil. So, what is P? P is nothing but the force. We know that force is equal to stress into area. What is stress at this level? It is nothing but gamma into H1, the height H1. Gamma into H, gamma into H1 into A plus here it is gamma sat into H2 gamma sat into H2 into A. What is A? is A is nothing but the area of cross section of the soil mass. So, from this we can calculate the sigma. Sigma is equal to P by A. So, gamma H1 A by A is gamma H1 plus gamma sat H2 A by A is gamma sat H2. What is pore water pressure? Pore water pressure is calculated only here because water table is here. Here there is no water table. It is 0 and here it is gamma sat into H2. What is eff effective stress? Nothing but um, sigma minus pore water pressure. So, gamma H1 plus gamma sat H2 minus gamma W H2. So, we, we know that uh, gamma sat minus gamma W can also be written as gamma dash. So, submerge like that. So, gamma H1 plus gamma dash into H2. This is the effective stress. So, here what happens is if the water table rises the ground surface, the whole of the soil is saturated. Here, if it rises to the uh, ground surface, the whole of the uh, soil is saturated. Hence, Sigma dash is nothing but gamma dash into H1 plus H2. It can also be written as gamma dash into total H. H1 plus H2 is H in the from the diagram. H1 plus H2 is equal to H. So, as gamma dash, we already know gamma dash is less than gamma. So, the effective stress is reduced due to the rise in the water table. But what happens if the water table is depressed below the section X, XX? Here, sigma dash is written as uh, gamma into H. So, in this case, what happens? Effective stress is increased. So, from the observation, we can tell that fluctuations in the water table level causes changes in the pore water pressure and also which corresponds to changes in the effective stress. Coming to the effective stress due to surcharge. What happens if there is a surcharge? So, let us consider the case when soil is subjected to surcharge load that is Q with the intensity Q per unit area while assuming the water table here at the level BB. The stresses at various sections are determined as at the section A. What happens? Uh, the total stress sigma is nothing but the Q. Surcharge, poor water pressure, there is no water, so 0. Sigma dash is nothing but sigma minus U. That is uh, Q minus 0, that is Q. What happens at the B? Sigma is equal to Q plus uh, gamma 1 into H1. 
what is pore water pressure there is no water table hence it is zero so sigma uh, effective stress that is sigma dash is nothing but q plus gamma 1 h1 minus zero that is q uh, sigma dash is equal to q plus gamma 1 h1 what happens at the cc level it is sigma is equal to q plus gamma 1 into h1 plus gamma sat 2 into h2 what if for water pressure there is no water table here to so 0 0 and here it, there is water table level so it is nothing but gamma sat into 2 into h2 here there is poor water pressure here so it is gamma w into at what height h2 h2 so here what happens sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u that is q plus gamma 1 h1 plus uh, what is uh, gamma sat 2 h2 it it acts as gamma sat 2 h2 minus gamma w h2 okay we know that gamma sat minus gamma w is gamma dash so gamma sat minus gamma w is gamma dash so plus gamma dash of 2 into h2 so the effective stress is increased by q throughout the throughout the section it is increased by q q and q so what happens uh, what uh, what is the effective stress in soils which are saturated by the capillary action let us see so if there is a capillary action what happens this is a capillary action so if the soil above the uh, water table is saturated by the capillary action see this this one above the water table is saturated uh, then what happens the pore water pressure above the water table is always negative see thus it is negative side negative and this is positive so the water table is at uh, level bb as shown in the figure water table is at level bb we are having two cases one is soil saturated up to the surface of aa this is first case and soil saturated up to the level dd see this is a second case so let us deal with the first case soil saturated up to the surface aa so here we have to draw the uh, section that is uh, at the section aa what are the stresses sigma is equal to here there is no water hence it is zero no uh, no load or no subcharge it is zero and what a pore water pressure it is negative due to the capillary action minus gamma w what is the height height is taken as this is at the surface level aa so at the surface level aa it is nothing but minus gamma w into h1 so what is what about the effective stress nothing but gamma minus u that is gamma w into h1 okay minus into minus it is plus come into the section d dd that is nothing but this is a section dd what happens here Sigma is taken as gamma sat 1 into h1 double dash. Here it is gamma sat 1 into h1 double dash. See so this what is h1 double dash? It is nothing but h1 double dash plus h1 dash is equal to h1. So if you want, um, so what a pore water pressure nothing but minus it is negative due to the capillary action into h1 double dash. And what is effective uh, uh, stress? Nothing but sigma minus u. The effective stress increase due to the capillary action. What about at the section BB? At the section BB, this is at the section BB. So, sigma is equal to gamma sat into 1 into H1 is the height. If there is no water table, so hence it is 0. There is no pore water pressure. Sigma dash is nothing but sigma minus U. So, here this comes. So, we can also write sigma sat, sigma dash by sigma W into H1. This effective stress is increased again due to the capillary action. Coming to the section CC. This is the section CC. Sigma is taken as sigma sat 1 into h1 plus sigma sat into h2. See, this is h1 sigma sat into sigma sat into h2. So coming to the pore water pressure that is gamma w into h2. Because the water table is only in the height of h2. Again coming to the effective stress sigma minus u that is sigma sat h1 into h1 plus sigma sat 2 into h2 minus gamma w into h2. This is the second case when the soil is saturated up to the surface level DD. This is the second case. Here the soil is saturated up to this level. 
So accordingly, all the sections we have, like sigma is equal to 0, u is equal to 0, this one. And at the section uh, dd, we have gamma 1 into h1 double dash and capillary is negative. So again, it is effective stress is increased due to the capillary action. Similarly, we can find out at the section BB, again there will be increase due to the capillary action. Finally, at the section CC, this is the stress. So, the capillary water above the water table will always cause negative pressure gamma W into H, where what is H? H is nothing but the capillary rise. So, this negative pressure will cause the increase in the effective stress at all the layers below the saturation level. This is the important point you have to note it down. If the soil is saturated due to the rise in water table, what happens? Effective stress will also depend on submerged unit weight. Whereas the soil saturated with capillary water, the effective stress will depend mainly on the saturated unit weight. But what if water table rises to the top soil surface, the meniscus is destroyed and the capillary water changes to the free water. And this effective stress is reduced throughout the section. Thank you.